So today I received some flowers and they were my inspiration for this. Really, it's not the flowers, but the colors and the textures. And so what I would suggest is if you do get flowers and they're not looking their best, just reshape them, get them organized where they do look nice. And you just use that as your springboard. Just get it so that they look nice enough to get started. Right here, I have two pieces of foam core white. I folded it um, by using tape on the back side so it acts as a hinge. And that's just to help keep the distractions away from the shapes that I wanna draw. So the next day I'm getting my watercolor paper and I'm, I'm heading over to get some pencils and some uh, water soluble crayons and some other fun little um, things that I want to add to this for texture. And I usually try to stick with things that are a little bit more geared towards water media. So they're things that could dissolve with the water, such as watercolor pencils, that kind of thing. So in the next st stage you're gonna see is I'm now, I have all my supplies and I'm rearranging the flower one more time at my eye level, just so that it looks a little bit more pleasing. And I'm just gonna go for, I'm being very loose and I'm just taking the bigger shapes. So I'm kind of looking at the flowers as shapes, as, fl as like, for example, a circle for the big flower in the front. Maybe there's the um, leaves that have the triangle shape and I'm just kind of building up textures and I'm not even worried about the vase that it's in. I'm just basically working with the flowers and I would suggest really just looking at it as shapes and what comes in front and what goes in back and do your best job and it's fine. Don't worry about it because it's almost as if the more textures and layers and if you see it through the paint, it makes it more interesting. That's what I've discovered. So just be very loose and fun. And here I am, again, just kind of penciling out some shapes, some big shapes. And then I'm gonna move on to the other areas where I start adding my paint colors and that kind of thing. And I usually do have a tendency to start like you're seeing here with some of the greenery stems, just because it gives me a little bit of an idea of where the height and where I want to end the painting. So if you notice now I'm doing a bottom leaf and it's just because I know that I don't want to go beyond that because that's the end of the page. And that's all. I just basically kind of fill in the areas that I think are more interesting. And here I'm just kind of quickly sketching in some different textures of uh, color maybe even some value of shadows, that kind of thing. And um, I'm looking at that rose, it looks like at this point. And again, I'm just kind of building up the overall feeling or the shape is not 100% accurate. And I really, that's not my goal. I just want to have fun and create things that are um, just inspiring for their sake of knowing that they're a flower, they're fun, they're colorful, they're textured. And that should be your goal. The ultimate goal is to have fun. If it turns out to be a great painting, then hey, you have a double win. Um, so here I am, I'm kind of building up that long top flower that's kind of coming down. And again, reshaping some of the leaves and stems to make sure that they fit on the page. And you'll see me working in and out throughout this process and kind of grabbing different pencils I'm not sure if this is a green one or a black one, but usually I'll, I'll switch between a dark green or even a black to get my strong values. Um, and then I go in, I start building up the color items. So I'm looking at the center of the flower. It has the feeling of a circle. So I'm building up circle shapes. And then I have the outer ring. And I also have, oh, it looks like I'm now going into, oh, I'm building up some shadows. So. Again, if I see something really dark, this is what I was telling you about earlier, I take my black pencil and I'm just building up some dark shapes so that when I go back in, I'm not worried about avoiding certain areas and I know where it needs to be the darkest. So I have my darkest darks and my lightest lights already put in. Now I'm just getting some fun shapes of some of those purple, lavender looking daisies that are in there. And again, building up the green values of the stems underneath. And I'm doing just the overall sketch outside. I'm not building up the color yet because I'm going to use mixed media. I'm gonna use pencils, I'm gonna use watercolor. I'll even use a little bit of some water soluble Neo um, crayon pencils. And now it looks like I'm going back to my big shapes again. And again, I'm just building up a value system here. I'm just kind of getting some colors blocked in 
And if you notice that pink flower is the star, at least I think it is. And then I would say the second star of the show is that long skinny branch at the top. Those are the two most interesting. And then the third one would be that daisy that was facing away. It's not in camera at this point. But those are my three main characters. And now I'm just, again, just still building up all the different layers and shapes and line work. Here I've taken a just a regular red pencil. And now I'm back to my um, ink tense pencils. They're like a watercolor ink. And again, I'm building up the shapes of the yellow and the green and putting in some texture, some cross hatching back and forth. And I know that I'm gonna put paint back on this. I'm gonna use some watercolors. So I'm not worried about detail yet. And in fact, I hope some of the roughness of this stands out. I want it to look really um, free and textural and interesting in that way. So I will keep building this up. I'm gonna move forward for the sake of the video and time, but you get the idea. I'm gonna keep building this up. And here I'm starting to get my watercolors going and I have basic color set. I have a yellow, a green, an aqua blue, a magenta, and I believe that's it. And so what I'm doing in here is I'm just kind of building up. This is the yellow and I'll put in a touch of the green. So there's the green with a pinch of orange because I want it to be a little bit dirtier of an, a green, not too bright, um, almost a lime green. Um, in, in this case, I'm puddling it, making it nice and watery. And I'm going in with my magenta with, uh, looks like a, yeah, just the magenta, just to start with. It's a pinky and I'm going very light because I want it to almost go pink. So I'm gonna start adding some white into this here shortly because I don't want it to get too dark too fast. So I'm just kind of laying out those fuzzy shapes that you see in, the, um, in that daisy. And now I'm pulling in all the light. So it's just pure water and I'm spreading this out so it gets a little bit softer on the edges. And that allows for two things. It's the, the gradation of the flower. It also keeps me loose and allows some light filtering white paper to come through. And now I'm going to be working on the outside petals. I'm not doing too many of these right away. Um, I'm just kind of laying in some of the ways that the leaves are, or the petals are shaped. And I'll just go around the flower and kind of start building up that. And again, I'm not going too dark with the paint. I know I can always go back in. And my plan is to start adding in some other values and different mixed media. So right now I'm just doing the watercolor part and just putting in the shape. And it's again, it's going around almost like a, a plate shape. So I'm going around in a circle and doing different layers of these flowers. And it's just building up the textures and the shape. That's all I'm going for. And a little bit of the value. So the color value. So right now I'm just kind of building up some values of colors and that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to move forward so that you can see the rest of this in the next stages. I'm grabbing some other um, things such as the leaves and the stems. Okay, so now I'm just working on the other flowers. And again, I'm just going with my values and I'm softening areas. And because I used that watercolor soluble pencil underneath, it's just kind of blending in with the paint. And again, lighter values in the areas that are light, darker values where it's darker. And I'm building up some, even some of these purples up at the top where the petals are in shadow and they get stacked on the top kind of almost like a spiral if you look at the top of a rose before it's all the way bloomed and now I'm just again adding some water to soften some of the edges building up some um, things that may look like petals behind it and that's that's where that's going so I'll continue this and start building up some of the other areas that I think are needed such as um, 
extra petals and maybe even go into the other areas that are flowers so it could be even um oh i did a leaf so sometimes i'll go in and i'll start painting in some of the shapes of the leaves and it must be because i wanted a darker value and sometimes what happens if i feel like i'm not sure how dark to go with certain things i'll start adding a darker value or another color that gives a a distinct change so that I can compare. So I'm not putting all my pink flowers, for example, in one area and not getting stuck. So this way it keeps things separated and it keeps me kind of more in control, especially with watercolor colors because it's so loose. Now I'm adding some purples and I added um, what it was is purple and magenta together to make a really pretty, almost a, a purple pink color for these other flowers and again I'm being very loose I'm not making them perfect um, petals and I'm just basically getting the shapes overall and a light wash here I'm adding the dark value again with the green so I can compare just like I talked about earlier and now I'm building up some darker petals behind that again for value change so that I can compare and um, it looks like it's um, a nice way to kind of build up shapes and um, and also keep me within the paper range of what I want to do next. And so I start getting, um, as I start developing my painting, I want to go looser and I start filling in areas that are needed to anchor the painting. So it starts getting fuller. And by doing that, I don't want things to get muddy. So I keep things spaced out and I work from one area and then I wait a few minutes and I go over to another area. So more than likely, I'll probably start adding in some other things such, such as like pencil work or um, water soluble crayon a lot of times. And that's probably what I'm doing here. So here I am, I got out my Neo um, pencils, my watercolor pencils, my crayons and I'm just kind of building up some different textures and shapes so it's just not all um, flat watercolor and this is water soluble crayon so what happens is you apply it on like almost like a crayon and then as you go you can add water to it so it gets softer and it builds up the texture so that's what I'm doing here Okay, and so in here, what I'm doing is just flicking paint and getting some textures of the water um, and paint so that it has the droppings. And then I'm building with the brush, the paint that's left over, I'm lightly brushing in some shadow lines and um, just softening some of the edges of the different petals. I'm also creating some shapes, some negative shapes by doing this. And again, it's just getting one more level of, of distance. So it makes the painting not look flat. It gives it more variety. And so what you're seeing here is a very, very light, um, I believe it was the blue with a little touch of the green in it. And then here is the green and the yellow. And again, I'm building up more shapes of flower um, petals leaves and stems and that kind of thing so i'll continue on So in this area, what I've done is I started to look it over and I'm starting to add in more of the black pencil just to do some line work and to just make some um, leaves that may have not been there. Um, I like the idea of having things that are almost like incomplete or have um, the feeling of being drawn on top. And so that's what you're seeing here. And again, very loose. There's no rules. Just have fun. And I'm signing my name. That must mean I'm getting close to being done.
And this is where I want to pull everything together. So I made a mixture of a cool liquid wash, which is like um, perhaps an aqua or blue mixed with water and maybe a pinch of, um, it could have a pinch of green or like a really cool brown. And then the next color, I also made a batch of, and I'm placing this by the way, in areas that I feel like that could be cool. So usually it's, a, it's mainly on one side of the arrangement. Um, or it's underneath things that would be casting a shadow. And then I have made a mixture of the warm one, which is more like oranges or yellows and maybe even some reds. And what I'm doing is again, I'm popping that in the areas that I think would be warm coming forward. And I'm being very, very loose because I know that this will dry pretty transparent. It'll be super um, light when it dries. And this again, just brings it all together as one unit. And you're going to see um, as it's starting to dry in the next photos that you're going to see a framed piece of it, it definitely brightens up at the end. So don't be afraid if it feels dark or um, you feel like it looks a little muddy. To me, right here, it looks a little muddy. But at the end, like I said, the paint absorbs into the paper and it just becomes luminous and very pretty. And I love the way it's just simply framed. You'll see here just a simple white frame. And voila, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Come back for more on NicoleSater.com.